is unwanted noise sneaking into your recordings. Now the cables you're using might be to blame, but contrary to what you might have heard, it's not only about how much they cost. So let's get into it. Hi everybody, I'm Todd and I hope you're having a great week. Now I'm not saying that poor quality cables are a way to go because they're not, but there are diminishing returns as you start to spend more and more money. Now in this video, we'll take a look inside the most common audio cables, XLR, TRS, TS and RCA, to understand how they work and why balanced connections help us get clean, noise-free audio. So first let's talk about how noise enters your sound. One of the biggest sources of noise in any studio is interference from other electronic devices. Now some of them you can eliminate by turning them off, such as a mobile phone. But others, like computers and various audio gear, probably need to be on in order to do what you need to get done. Take a look at this image. See this power adapter placed next to the audio gear? Some of the electric current passing through nearby devices induces voltage, and this can contaminate the audio signal. Now this happens because electrical devices generate magnetic fields that can interfere with audio cables that aren't properly designed to reject noise. Even transformers near to one another can interfere with each other. You'll often see shielding around internal power supplies in audio gear to reduce the chance of noise entering the audio signal, and while this is good, it isn't always possible with external power supplies or even power cables running near audio cables. Once you've exhausted the first line of defense, which is always to separate audio and power cables as much as possible, or at least ensure they're not running parallel to one another, then what can you do? Well, thankfully we have a solution. Balanced cables can help prevent this. So just what's inside audio cables? Well, when connecting audio devices, you'll most likely use one or more of these types of cables. XLR quarter inch TRS, and they do come in other sizes as well. TRS means tip ring sleeve, so three connections. You could also use a quarter inch TS, again, other sizes are available, and that's tip sleeve, meaning two connections. And finally, RCA, which also have two connections. Now here's what they look like inside. XLR and TRS cables contain three components, a shield, a positive wire, and a negative wire. TS and RCA cables only have a signal wire and a shield or ground. Now it's the construction we saw in the XLR and TRS cables that makes the difference. Only cables with two signal wires can support balanced connections, which means better noise rejection. There are also quad connector cables available that do have some advantages for noise rejection, but the basic premise of balanced audio remains the same. So how does a balanced connection actually work? Well, here's a simple breakdown. Every balanced audio connection has three essential parts. A driver, and that's at the source of the signal, the cable and connectors, or the connection, and finally the receiver, like an audio interface or mixer. Now, a balanced receiver uses what's called a differential device that only responds to voltage difference between the two signal wires. That means if a voltage is present on only one wire, it passes through, differential mode. If an identical voltage though is present on both wires, it gets canceled out. We call this common mode rejection. And here's the important part. Noise picked up along the cable is essentially equal on both wires, meaning the differential device is gonna cancel that noise out entirely. I wanna be clear that this is a basic concept of floating balance connections, meaning neither signal wire is connected to ground or a ground reference signal. In a future video, I'll get further into other terminology around balanced circuits such as impedance balanced, transformer balanced, and electronically balanced. Now let's consider balanced versus unbalanced cables over long distances. Imagine two audio cables running a long distance, one balanced and one unbalanced. See the noise interference along both cables? The unbalanced cable allows noise to enter the signal so that when the audio reaches the destination, the interference is still present and it's passed along further in the audio chain. But now look at the balanced cable. The same noise is picked up equally on both wires. Thanks to common mode rejection, the noise is canceled out when it reaches the differential device within the receiver before it ever even gets any further along into the audio path. The longer the cable run, of course, the greater the opportunity for it to pick up interference. So next time you're setting up connections in your studio, remember, while unbalanced cables can be fine for short distances, many people recommend under 25 feet, and especially if they can be kept away from sources of interference, I like to keep them even shorter than that. But if you want clean, noise-free recordings, go balanced whenever possible. Now, if you'd like to know more about studio setup, gear, and workflow, check out one of the videos on the screen. As always, you know I appreciate you joining me. I hope your day is awesome, and I'll see you next time.